Hello, welcome to the Bird Watching Channel. I'm your host, Sharon Sorensen, here to talk about birds and their amazing eyes. And birds' eyes certainly merit some special attention. For one thing, birds' eyes are huge, proportionately larger than those of mammals, and thought by some scientists to be, well, the best among any vertebrate. Some birds' eyes are equal to or actually outweigh their brains. Ostriches, for instance, have the largest eyes of any land animal, eyes that measure a full two inches across, although part of those eyes aren't visible, hidden by skeletal or other structural matters. What else makes birds' eyes so special? Those eyes give birds extraordinarily wide views and bright images, especially compared to our human eyes. And in some respects, all this claim to fame, though, seems, well, strange when we realize that birds' eyes are not movable in their skulls. We humans, on the other hand, without moving our heads, can shift our eyes left or right, up or down, and roll them around, but not so with birds with their fixed eyes. Birds in general have either high acuity, in other words, really sharp, clear vision, or high sensitivity, in other words, the ability to see very well in poor light. As you might guess, diurnal birds, birds that are active during daylight and sleep at night, like rose-breasted grosbeaks, have high acuity. Nocturnal birds, however, like owls and whippoorwills, are active at night, sleeping by day, so they tend to have high sensitivity. Let's explain it this way. Even in bright moonlight, we humans see only in shades of gray because we do not have high sensitivity. Nocturnal birds, however, can typically see a full range of color, even in only weak moonlight. But oh, how well some birds can see, especially raptors. Bald eagles, for instance, are said to be able to see a newspaper well enough from a football field away that, if they could read, would be able to read the classified ads at that distance. They can even see a rabbit move more than a mile away. American kestrels can spot an insect the size of a just a little grain of rice at 60 feet away. But where would we humans be without binocular vision? That's what gives us depth, depth perception. Our eyes are set in the fronts of our faces. Again, not so with most birds. Most birds have their eyes set on the sides of their faces. That gives them only monocular not binocular vision. That's why you see an American robin cock its head to one side when foraging for bugs or worms in the lawn. It's turning its head, and therefore its fixed eyes, toward the ground to better see and pinpoint that insect or worm it's after. On the other hand, birds do have highly flexible necks so they can swivel their heads to amazing degrees in order to direct their eyes at whatever they need to see. But with eyes set on the sides of the head, exactly where the eyes are positioned makes a big difference in how birds see. In general, shorebirds, like this Dunlin, have eyes that are positioned high on their skulls. And since shorebirds feed face down, mostly poking their long bills into mud looking for invertebrates, they could certainly use protection from potential predators overhead. So eyes set high and back let them see as they're poking in the mud 
above themselves to detect any potential predators. For instance, American woodcocks, one of our more unusual shorebirds, have very large eyes set high in their skulls. And if you look at them from the back, woodcocks show how the position of their eyes lets them see behind themselves. Apparently, scientists think they have a 360 degree view. <laughs> And you thought your elementary school teachers had eyes in the backs of their heads. Waterfowl also have elevated eye positions. Perhaps you've seen them dozing with only one eye open. The amazing thing about them is that they can sleep with one half of their brain while the other half is active, watching, protective. <laughs> we should be so adaptable. While birds with eyes set high and back on their heads only have monocular vision, the trade-off then is that they have those incredibly wide fields of view. But by comparison, owls have eyes set in the front of their faces, much the way we do. So they, like us, have binocular vision. But the trade-off for them is a narrower field of view, only about 70 degrees instead of that 360 degrees of the woodcock. But owls can certainly swivel their heads. Okay, it's a myth that they can turn their heads 360 degrees, but some can swivel up to about 340 degrees, and that's, you know, that's quite a head turning. But this binocular vision is really essential for owls that hunt live prey on the wing. Only with binocular vision can owls judge distance and be successful hunters. And if binocular vision is low, birds compensate. Owls are well known, for instance, for bobbing their heads up and down to further judge distances. It's an effort called triangulating, and it helps them zero in on prey with real accuracy. So if you happen to walk up on an owl snoozing on its day roost, and it starts bobbing its head, you, you probably want to just move along because it's judging the distance it would take for him to grab your hat. Given that a blind bird is almost certainly to become a dead bird, how do birds protect their eyes? Well, like us, they have eyelids that move up and down across the eye. In addition, however, they have something called a nictitating membrane, a transparent film that slides eyelid-like horizontally across the eye, lubricating and cleansing the eye. Now, the eyelid and nictitating membrane sometimes show up in photographs caught during the, quote, blink, unquote. And so the purpose of that nictitating membrane is to protect birds in flight, to protect them while they're feeding, and to protect them while darting through brush or branches. And even diving birds, like the double-crested cormorants or diving ducks, and birds like loons protect their eyes also with nictitating membranes. And certain of them have a window-like center in the membrane that enables them to see well even when the membrane is, is when the mem membrane is closed. It's it's sort of like having on swimming goggles. Birds' eyes also have different components than ours. And without getting into the technical science of rods and cones and all those other biological intricacies, here are a few highlights. First, while we have red, green, and blue photoreceptors, birds have all of those, plus they also have ultraviolet, or UV, photoreceptors. So they see colors we can't. Who knows what a female indigo bunting sees when she looks at this male? Scientists believe that UV vision helps birds forage, 
identify species, select partners, and effectively deal with orientation, especially during migration. Probably the most interesting of these advantages of UV vision is that of selecting partners. For instance, males and females of such species as blue jays, cedar waxwings, white-throated sparrows, Carolina wrens, all look alike. Well, at least to us. But wouldn't it be important for the birds to know? And perhaps the bird's UV vision distinctly separates one sex from the other. And setting apart the most brilliant of the opposite sex makes for good genetic breeding, thus aiding mate selection. But how would UV vision help birds forage? Well, an interesting bit of research about American kestrels show that they do exactly that. Kestrels forage mostly from high perches, often utility wires, watching for mice and voles, most often in harvested agricultural fields. And because of their UV vision, well, they can see mouse pee clearly and then follow the trail of pee directly to the mouse. And well, okay, maybe that was more than you wanted to know. But birds' eyes indeed are truly amazing. And you know, I have to wonder what they see when they look at us from, you know, maybe a mile away, long before we see them. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little segment about birds and their amazing eyes. I find it absolutely fascinating and hope you have too. And if you'd like to learn more about bird watching, I hope you would check out one of my books, Birds in the Yard Month by Month, How Birds Behave, or Planting Native to Attract Birds to Your Yard, or, or maybe visit my website, birdsintheyard.com, or join me on Facebook, because almost every day I post something about birds and their habitat. Meanwhile, I hope you enjoy the birds, and may you always have birds in your binoculars.